This video is gonna make you wanna spend some money, and I apologize ahead of time. Can you hear the rain? I feel like you can probably hear the rain, but we gotta do what we gotta do. Let's talk about stabilizers. I think there's a big misconception around stabilizers that you're gonna buy a little tiny front end guy like this here, and that you're somehow gonna get the same effect as something like this. There's no doubt that target archery is where the importance of stabilization really became obvious. But I would argue that it is just as important for a hunter as well. So let's dive in a little bit more and let's dig into what stabilizers do, what they don't do, and why they're important for hunters. There are three primary things that happen when you add stabilizers to your bow. So three kind of main goals that a stabilizer is going to achieve. The first one is pretty simple. It increases the mass weight of the bow. Increasing the mass weight of the bow to a certain point is going to inherently make it more stable. It lowers the center of gravity on the bow as well because the stabilizers are attached at the bottom of the bow. Number two, most of the good stabilizers that are out there are going to incorporate some sort of vibration dampening magic to them. And then the third thing, is the physics of stabilization, which I will now take the next 10 minutes in an attempt to explain how this actually works. What is moment of inertia in simple terms? Definition of moment of inertia, a measure of the resistance of a body to angular acceleration about a given axis that is equal to the sum of the products of each element of mass in the body and the square of the element's distance from the axis. I feel like we don't even have to go on. There you go. All right, so obviously that definition is a little ridiculous even though that was the easy to understand version. Here's how I can explain this after I talked with one of the engineers over at Ramrods. More to come from Ramrods later in this video, but basically the easiest way to understand this is resistance to movement, okay? So this is a six inch bar with a two ounce weight out front. This is a 12 inch bar with a two ounce weight out front. In theory, you would think this would be twice as good as this, but the way the math works out, this is actually almost four times as good as this. So obviously we need a job site magnet. Here's the concept. If I hold this magnet by this end, Because all the weight is back here with me and that end is fairly consistent the entire way through, this is pretty easy, okay? When I switch this around and I start trying to do this, if I'm limp-wristed, that magnet wants to stay out in front. That magnet wants to hold its position in space. And I have to move a lot slower to actually get that thing to move. What's, what's happening is when I'm at draw, and this is sticking out the front, any little jitter, that pressure is going all the way forward and hitting that weight at the front, and it's getting resistance. It's getting resistance. It's saying, no, no, we're, we like where we are in space. We wanna hold this position. So rather than getting the little jitters that you get when you're running no stabilizers, you get this slow moving pin and the longer the stabilizer and typically the more weight you add at the end of it, that thing is just gonna keep slowing down, keep slowing down. So I know this video, we're doing a cutter stabilizer giveaway, but the guys at Ramrods must have heard and they were like, we want in on this action too. So what they did was send me a six, eight, 10 and 12 for me to kind of test out and see what I thought. So here's what we're gonna to do today. I'm going to put on the six and the eight, six in the back, eight in the front. Then I'm gonna to switch to the 10 in the back, 12 in the front, and then I'm gonna go with the 12 in the back, 15 in the front of the cutter that I have. 
and I'm gonna do some group measurements and I'm gonna see, do longer stabilizers actually make you more accurate? I'm back here at 60 yards. Let's do some shooting. If I'm good and calm, then everything feels just fine. Like if I, if I stay really calm and centered and I don't get the kind of micro jitters, then it's fine. The, this weights out okay. I mean, I would rather have a couple more ounces on the back just for the hold. But if I have any jitters at all, like if I get shakes at all, then that arrow is not gonna land where I want it to land. All right, so we're done with the six inch back and the eight inch front. Overall, what it feels like to me is it feels like that pin just does not want to stay where I want it to stay. It's like I don't have enough resistance uh, to, to get it to actually hold in the middle of the target. So am I still killing an animal at 60 yards with this setup? Yes. Do I feel super confident with it? No, just because I know what the potential is. So let's change it out to the 12 inch front bar and the 10 inch back bar and see how we do with that one. So already what I'm noticing is that with the six inch back and the eight inch front, my groups seem to be a little bit more lateral. And I think that's because it draw, I don't, I'm not tending to bob up and down. I'm tending to, to have that waver left and right. So even just switching to the 10 and the 12 with the same amount of weight, those groups are rounding out. Let's continue. Oh, the light is so good in the middle of the day. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and shoot the 12 inch back and the 15 inch front and I've weighted it the way I like to have it weighted and we're gonna see how these groups come out. Here's what I'm noticing because I'm doing these back to back to back. The shorter stabilizers took me longer to actually get on target where I wanted to be. It was like I was kind of getting close and then I'd have to kind of work it over, work it over, work it over and then get where I wanted. And then as I started to pull through that shot, because I'm getting less resistance of motion, I was having to move really, really, really slowly as I was starting to pull through or that shot would go off. But what I'm noticing with the longer bars is it's, it's allowing me to move quicker onto target and then getting that pin to kind of stay there. And as I start pulling through the shot and adding more um, of my influence into the shot, so my actually pulling through, it's kind of staying, it's staying on the dot more. Right about now, you're probably thinking, but what about just a front bar? The majority of us, that's what we kind of have been shooting. And it's funny because you add a quiver and a scope on one side, and then you add a straight bar going out the front that's, you know, whatever, a 6, 8, 10, 12. And you have nothing that's kind of helping that weight on the other side to kind of balance out the bow. I took the advice of Levi Morgan, and I've kind of heard it before in the past, but the way I set it up when I'm figuring out the way I want it weighted, I close my eyes, draw the bow back, and then open my eyes and look at the bubble, okay? And if the bow is tilted over this way, I add more weight on the side until it comes in here. And if, and if it's pulling over here, then I'll take less weight off of the back. The back bar is hugely important. It's hugely important. And especially with the VXR, I want it weighted back more than front. If I add a bunch of point weight on the front of that, uh, of the front of the front bar, I get shaky with it. If I add more in the back, for some reason, it just kind of brings it up and it actually, for some reason, makes the bow feel lighter to me. So I'm gonna run a back bar and I'm gonna run a front bar and the front bar is 15 inches long and the back bar is 12 inches long because I am so much more confident with that setup. And now you're asking, but isn't that gonna be inconvenient for hunting? And I'll say this, have you ever carried like a, like a five gallon bucket full of water in your right hand? and then picked up another one in your left hand and all of a sudden for some reason it's a lot more comfortable. That's what the setup when it's really balanced feels like to me. There's, there's places on the bow that I can grab the bow and when I'm walking, uh, I, can, I can carry it kind of balancing on one finger and it feels fine. Like it feels like a comfortable walk and ride with the bow. The other thing is I use the quick releases where, uh, like you saw in the beginning of the video, 
I unscrew those things uh, just like a quarter of a turn and out they pop out of these uh, special brackets that I've added to the bow and I'm gonna stuff those stabilizers in my pack so when I'm going on long journeys, when I'm hiking into a stand or uh, in elk season which is coming up here, when I'm walking uh, you know, longer distance to get to places, I'm not gonna have that on the bow and the bow is gonna be strapped to the pack. It's another reason that I run a dovetail sight so I can undo that thing, pull it off, pack it away, and then put it back together when I get there. It takes me 45 seconds. Like it's, it's worth being able to take everything down and pack it closer to my body. And now there's a third thing that I know you guys are thinking, when's this dude just gonna give us the stuff? We're getting closer, we're getting closer. Let's talk about Cutter and talk about how this kind of came about. I knew I wanted to run a different stabilizer rig than I'd been running. Um, I've tried a, a lot of the different brands. I've probably gone through 10 different companies worth of stabilizers from low end stuff all the way up to some, you know, some of the more high end stuff, about as high end as you can find for hunting. Optimally, this is what would exist. It would be something, a material that is completely weightless, like zero weight, maximum stiffness, and was completely invisible so that it did not get hit by the wind when you were holding it out. If anyone knows of any product like that, please let me know because we will make a bedillion dollars with it. When I contacted Cutter, I Instagram messaged them and I said, hey, are you guys interested in doing a giveaway? Here's what I'll do. If you will send me some of your product, I will test it out and if I like it, I will give that set away and I will purchase a new set. So a few of the things that drew me to Cutter, they are the narrowest diameter that I could find. The, the point of this stabilizer when I was talking to Evan, the owner, was he said I was antelope hunting and I would, uh, I would draw up and I just felt like the bow because it was so windy was just getting pushed so I wanted to do something to minimize the wind. And obviously you're not taking anything off the riser. You know, you can do the narrow micro diameter arrows and he went, bingo. Let's do a micro diameter stabilizer. If you look at the graphic, it's uh, an, an antelope head. It's a super cool graphic. They've got great, like their, their branding, I'm a really a huge fan of. It's simple. There's, there's not a lot of stuff going on. It's just the simple little antelope on that really slim carbon shaft with two matching aluminum end caps on there. And this thing, man, it's not like I've really done some stuff to it to really see and make sure that this isn't gonna break. These, these aluminum end caps that are here, the carbon is, uh, essentially the aluminum is wallowed out and the carbon shaft goes all the way up in here. This aluminum is not like an outsert that goes into the center of the carbon. This carbon rod is full size going all the way up into this aluminum shaft here. This thing has to be solid. And I've leaned the bow, I've pushed on the bow a little bit, I've bent these things in my hands, I've, I've pulled, I put them in the freezer, I pulled them out just to see how the glue and everything was. I've left them on my dashboard on my car to see how the glue was. I did a Zoom call with him to talk to him for a little while and he's just trying to make his way, man. He's trying to make his way in this world and contribute to the archery family and I just think that's such a cool thing. So I'm super happy to support him and he's super excited to support you guys. Let's do the giveaway. So I had everybody go to my Instagram page and go to Cutter Stabilizers and like and tag us on each other's pages. Then we put them in a database, went through, randomly searched, and you are the winner. So I'm gonna reach out to them via private message. I'm gonna get in touch with them and then I'm gonna mail them all this stuff. And then hopefully they're gonna use it and they're gonna hunt with it and hopefully tag us in some pictures and stuff like that. I think you're obligated to tag us in some pictures on Instagram when we do this. Yeah. I like giving stuff away. I got all these extra ramrod bars now here at the uh, at the old container. Hmm. I wonder what we're gonna do with those in the future. Thank you guys for watching. I'm Brandon McDonald.